Hey guys, today I'm gonna show you how I build and debug HTML games and apps on Android in less than a minute. Keep watching to find out how. Hi, David here, also known as Dakita RPG. Welcome to my channel. Today, I'm going to be writing a simple Android app that will display a HTML page for the app's main GUI. I'm also going to show you how to build the app directly to your Android device and begin debugging it within one minute. Before we begin, make sure to have the latest version of Android Studio installed on your computer. You will also need an Android device that has USB debugging enabled, but if you don't know how to do that, don't worry because I'll get to that a little bit later on. First of all, let's make a new empty project in Android Studio. I called my project HTML underscore app, but you can name yours however you like. You should probably target API level 16 and above. I only target API level 15 here, but some of my code actually requires level 16, and the debugging code requires API level 19. Once everything is set, click finish and wait for the project to build. In the activity main XML file, I delete the example text element and then replace it with a web view element. A web view is basically a web browser that we will use to load and display our HTML code. Once the web view has been added, make sure that the width and height are set to match parent. Also, add a unique ID for the web view into the ID field. Here, I call mine web underscore view. In the Android Manifest XML file, I add any permissions that my app will ask for when the app is installed. I want it to have access to the Android device's vibrate feature, so I add that permission here. I also want to fix my display orientation to landscape mode. It seems that if the device orientation changes when the app is opened, the web view will actually reload, so it's best to fix it one way or another, and for my game, landscape mode seems to work best. The last thing I do in this file is add the internet permission. This is so that my app can contact and load content from any third party websites or APIs that I would like to in the future. Now in the main activity java file within the main activity class, I create a private variable to hold the main web view object. I'm just copying the code from another project of mine, so the editor automatically asks me if I want to import the relevant classes. Then, I create a private variable to store an instance of a custom public class that will be used to interface between the JavaScript environment running in the app's web view and the Java environment that is running the web view. This custom class will be passed into the web view later on. For now, I just define a few basic functions. One to trigger the Android Toast function, which is basically just an Android pop-up notification, and another function to vibrate the user's device for a duration. Notice that before each function there is a line with a JavaScript interface. This makes the following function compile properly so that it can be used within the JavaScript environment. Also notice that some words are highlighted in red, this shows that the required library has not been included for the object that is trying to be used. To fix this error, you can highlight the word and press Alt and Enter at the same time to include the relevant library. Next, in the onCreate function, I set the previously defined view variable to store the main web view that has been added into the app. Notice that I'm finding the view by using rid web underscore view, where web underscore view is the ID defined for the web view that was previously added. After that, I get a reference to the settings used for the web view and then I enable JavaScript, DOM storage and access from file URLs. This is to allow JavaScript code to run, web storage to be available and for loading local JSON files. It seems to trigger some kind of calls access error when trying to load local JSON files for some reason. Once the settings are defined, I set the view to allow for debugging. This will allow us to use Google Chrome on the desktop to debug the Android app in real time. This should be removed after debugging of your app is finished as it's only really intended for development. 
Now I can add my custom JavaScript interface class to the web view. This is done so that the JavaScript environment is able to call the functions that's defined in the interface class. I also have to give a name to reference the class from within the JavaScript environment. I use the name Android here, but you can use any name that you'd like. I will show how to use this class from within JavaScript in a little bit. Finally, I set the WebViews client to be a new WebView client object, and then I load a local URL for the app's main HTML file. Main HTML file will have to be placed into the Android asset folder, which doesn't yet exist. Before I add that though, I want to double check that the ID of the web view matches what was defined earlier. To create the main asset folder, right click on the app drop down in the project navigation area, go to new and then folder and then select the assets folder and click finish. Once the asset folder has been added, you can select it in the project navigation area. Simply right click it and select show in explorer. This will open the parent folder in windows for you and you can click into the asset folder and copy in your game or apps HTML files along with any other files that your app requires. For this example, I use a game that's made in the easy to use RPG Maker MV software, but you can use any valid HTML project that you would like. Later, I'll demonstrate a simple interface app using the well-known Bootstrap framework. Once your chosen HTML files have been added, you can build and test your app. Notice that Android Studio is able to detect my Sony Xperia L1. This is because my phone is set to allow for USB debugging. To enable USB debugging on your Android device, simply open the Android settings menu, scroll all the way down to About Phone, enter the menu and scroll down to build number. Tap build number 7 times until it tells you that you are a developer. Then go back to the previous menu and you will now see a developer options. Enter developer options and scroll down a little bit until you see enable USB debugging. Click on that and you're good to go. The first time you select your device as the deployment target in Android Studio, your mobile will ask you if you want to allow for USB debugging for this connection. Select Always Allow for this computer and click OK. It might take a little bit longer to launch your test the first time or after some major changes have been made, so give it a little bit of time to finish building. You can track the build progress in Android Studio at the bottom right of the GUI. Once it's finished building, the app will automatically launch on your Android device. Before I build and test the app though, I'm going to open the styles XML file. This file handles the main colours that's used by the app and some style changes. It's very likely that you would also want to edit this to be more in line with your own app's kind of display style. I'm not going to change anything yet as I do want to see how it looks first, so let's build and test the project. You should select Use Same Selection for Future Launches when you're selecting your Android device as the deployment target. This will reset the next time you open Android Studio, but it can save a lot of time when you're testing on the same device for a long time. Then I click OK and wait for the app to build and launch on my device. As I said earlier, I can call the Java functions from my JavaScript interface class from within the JavaScript environment. My game utilizes this by testing the vibrate and toast functions. It also tries to call a function that doesn't exist so that I can properly test debugging. Before I show you how to debug the app though, I'm going to fix up the style to be more suitable for my game. You probably noticed the large banner across the top of the screen with the name of my app. I'd like to remove that and it's actually very easy to do so. Simply go to Styles XML file and change Dark Action Bar to No Action Bar and then rebuild the app. If this is your first time here and you like this video, remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my future programming and DIY tech tutorials.
Notice it only takes around 20 to 30 seconds for my app to rebuild directly to my Android device, and when it does, the large bar with my app name is gone. Now though, the colour of the Android's icon bar doesn't quite match my game, so I'm going to change the colour to black. What I do is enter the colours XML file and set all the colours to be black and then rebuild the app once again. Looks much better now, but I think I want to remove it fully by having my game run in full screen mode. So, I go back to Styles XML file and I add some lines to remove the title and force the app into full screen. This seems to work much better for a game, but an app might want to display things differently, which is why I've shown you how to change it. For a quick example app, I use the well-known Bootstrap Framework's starter template to whip up a quick and easy interface using some basic HTML and JavaScript. In Android Studio, I set the app to display only in portrait mode, allow the status bar to display and reset the app's colours as well. Notice that in my HTML file's JavaScript code, I am calling functions on the Android object. These are the functions that I defined earlier within my JavaScript interface class, i.e. the vibrate and pop toast functions. I also call a function that doesn't exist so that I can debug and check for errors. Now you might be wondering how it's actually possible to check for the errors. So what to do is load up Google Chrome browser and go to chrome colon forward slash forward slash inspect after a few seconds, it should display your Android device's web view under the Pages Remote Target section as long as the app is currently running on your Android device and it's plugged in via USB with USB debugging enabled. From here, you can click to inspect, which will open up a regular Chrome console window for debugging the app. In the console window, you can get a full error stack trace when something goes wrong. You can also manually type in commands and remotely trigger them on the Android device. I'll leave a link in the description below with the Android Studio project that I've used in this video. Now, all that's left for you to do is begin debugging your own HTML game or app on Android. Make sure to smash the like button if the information in this video was valuable to you. Remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my future programming and DIY tech tutorials. I've been David from DakitaRPG.com and you have been awesome. Bye.